Alright, welcome back to another photo manipulation tutorial. Got a giant tarantula, and he's got a, I guess this lady is his owner, she doesn't know what to do with him, maybe she's moving, I don't know. But, let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial. So the image, the base plate of the room, uh, the lady was already in that image. I got it off of a site like Unsplash or Pixabay. So thought at one point I was gonna content wear her out, but just kept her in. So it's a good idea to have something in front of, in this case, the spider. Um, so got this image of the tarantula. And sometimes it's a good idea to reduce the opacity uh, and then move the image around to see where you might want to put this image. Um, so I'm hitting Control T, Command T on Mac and just expanding the scale and rotating, rotating. You just hover your mouse on one over one of the corners. And so anyway, going to start uh, cutting this tarantula out using the pen and I'm going to I'm not going to do a good job of cutting this out. So I'm not going to include all of those hairs. So one, it would be really difficult to do that. And, uh, you know, I think it would be more effective doing it the way I'm going to show you. So I've completed that selection, going to hit control enter. And I'm going to go through this test phase, hitting select then modify and feather. So this will allow me to feather that selection. So I'm going to just show you what point two looks like. So if I go ahead and create a layer mask and zoom in on this, you can see the edge is just way too sharp, especially with this subject being hairy. Uh, so I'm going to undo that and go back and hit this feather selection around three. So if I go back, hit a layer mask and you can see the edge is a little bit softer, but not quite soft enough for this subject. So going back and hitting undo and then select modify feather. And I'm going to crank this up to five. So then when I hit a layer mask and zoom in, it's the edge is a lot more fuzzy or hairy. So it's not quite enough, although it might work. But anyway, I'm going to use a layer mask and sort of get rid of all of this negative space first. So in between certain legs, you should be able to see the back wall, you know, in between these legs, for example. But so I'm going to create a layer right above the spider and this will be called, I'll label it hairs. And I'm going to select one of the colors of these hairs and try to figure out how to mimic these hairs to be able to put some of them back in. So if you go to uh, brush settings and then shape dynamics, switch it from pen pressure to fade. You can go through a series of uh, testing how much to put in this value. So put in a really long value, see if that's going to work. That looks like it's too long. So I'm going to go back up here, switch this to a lower value. So I think that's 200. And so you can go back and forth on this until you find like the right length. So what it's doing is it's fading out to a point uh, that mark. So I'm going to go in here and try to put some of these hairs back in. And then I'll merge this layer with the spider layer so that all of the adjustment layers that we do will affect those extra hairs. So selected some of these uh, abdomen hairs that are orange and gonna go ahead and put some of those back in. So I'm gonna select that layer of hairs and the spider by holding shift 
and then right click merge layers. So now all of those hairs are within that. It does get rid of your layer mask, so you want to kind of be comfortable with where you're at uh, concerning anything you want to do with the layer mask. I'm just going to rename that. And so concerning the woman, again, uh, she was already in this image. Uh, provides kind of this perfect way of setting that spider back in that space by just having something in front of him. But I'm going to go ahead and select her with the pen tool and going right up to the end there, hitting control, enter, and doing the same thing, hitting select, then modify, then feather. And I'm going to reduce this to about two so she doesn't have to have as fuzzy of an edge. Then I'm going to hit control J to put her on her own layer. So then I can put her above a spider layer. So label that lady. And I'm going to bring the spider layer back, put her above it just to show you. And then hit control T on the spider layer and just kind of mess with this uh, scale and rotation and kind of figure out where you want this to be. So hit file and puppet warp so on the spider layer. File and puppet warp and setting some of these uh, points to be able to drag the legs around. I'm going to speed through this. So I've got all these points whereby you can move them and some of the other points are kind of acting as anchor points to keep everything else in place. So it's good to go back and look at a reference photo because sometimes you can manipulate this so much that it no longer resembles uh, what it's supposed to resemble, in this case a spider. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Hitting the check mark and going back to uh, the spider, hitting Control T, it's Command T on Mac. And again, adjusting it, moving it. I'm going to go back to the puppet pin, puppet warp, and select these again. So I wasn't quite happy with how it turned out and wanting one of those legs to kind of be right in front of that window. And just moving this around a little bit. Again, looking at reference photos, so make sure that it still looks like a spider. So I decided to scale this down a little bit. It was a little too big. got a layer mask on the spider again using a soft brush kind of tidying up these areas even though we did a, a feather edge on the selection some of the areas are just a little too sharp so you can do this with a soft brush and a layer mask so I'm gonna select a curves adjustment layer gonna hover in between holding down alt to clip it to only affect the spider layer And on that curves layer, I dragged that point down to around mid-level just to reduce the brightness. I'm going to add another curves adjustment layer, clip it to only affect the spider. And with this, I'm going to drag this point kind of to the point where it's way too dark. and then hitting control I, command I on Mac, you can invert that. So you've hidden what you've just done and then using a white brush, you can reveal some of that curves adjustment layer. So the power of the layer mask is you can go back and forth with a white or black brush. White will 
reveal what you've concealed, black will do the opposite. So it's a great way of working non-destructively. So just, there's a before and after. Putting quite a bit of shadow underneath the spider. So I'm gonna reduce that original one. See how I can totally take it down to black. I'm gonna reduce that even more. And I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm not going to invert it, but using a black brush now, going to conceal a little bit of that reduction in brightness. I'm going to reduce the opacity and so there should be a, quite a bit of light coming in through this window and so there should be some highlights like on the top of this leg and of course that front part where his fangs are bringing out some of the highlights of those uh, orange knees. Of course, the abdomen should have a little bit of highlight going on it as well. So speeding through that a little bit. I'm gonna hit Control T on the spider and just still not happy with where it's sitting. And I'm going to go ahead and create another layer, clip it to only affect the spider. And this will be a dark shadow. So I'm going to change the color to black. And I'm going to paint, because it's only going to affect the spider. I'm going to reduce the flow, or increase and reduce the opacity and flow accordingly. So what I'm noticing is it's not looking right, so I put the dark shadow layer above all those curve adjustment layers. It's still not working. So I finally realized that I never changed the brush shape dynamics from when I was doing the hairs. So I'm going to select on that word, change it back to pen pressure because it was on fade. So now actually I'll take it off pen pressure and show you that it is, in fact, pure black and it never fades out, even though we don't want this, just to show you what it's doing if you wanted to do this. So I'll go ahead and undo this. And then reduce the flow, adjust the opacity a little bit. Go in here and on these undersides, just really emphasize the fact that there shouldn't be much light hitting the underneath sections of the legs and the abdomen. So speeding through that a little bit. Here's a uh, before and after, just a little bit of an adjustment. You can always reduce the opacity of that really dark layer. I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to have it underneath the spider. So this will be the shadow of the spider. So I've got a black color and a certain amount of uh, low flow and low opacity. I'm going to start painting in a shadow on this floor. So it's starting to actually look as if it's in that space. So the shadow is always key with any uh, photo manipulation that you're doing. It just brings that realism, uh, especially when you can see, if you look right underneath the abdomen, there's a little bit of light on that wall. So that's really making that pop really making it stand out, giving it that kind of contrast. So 
So speeding through a little bit. And uh, you want to make sure you're putting a shadow right underneath those feet. Otherwise, they kind of just look as if they're floating and not really set in there. So a little before and after of the shadow. And you can always create a uh, layer mask of the shadow. So then when using black and white, using black here to show you, you can erase some of this. So with a black brush, you can uh, reduce the opacity and get a very subtle effect of removing some of that shadow if, you've, if you think you've gone too far with putting too much shadow in there. So I've got this new image of some cobwebs in an attic. So I'm going to try to steal some of this web. I'm going to take the lasso selection tool. I'm going to go around the cobweb that uh, is primarily in darkness, or the background of it is dark. You don't want to select areas that are around that window. I'm going to hit Control J, Command J on Mac to isolate that web. And then I'm going to clip a levels adjustment layer to only affect that web. Of course, I forgot to clip it. So I'll go back and holding down Alt or Option on Mac, hover in between that and the cobweb layer. And now it will only affect that cobweb layer. So I'm messing around with these controls in levels. And I'm just going to select this first one, just reduce the black point right around there. And I'm going to select that layer of cobwebs. Go ahead and label it. And I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. So that'll remove all of that dark area. But as you can see in that sort of left part of the cobweb area, I need to apply a layer mask to the cobweb layer and kind of tidy this sharp edge up. Kind of get rid of these sharp edges. Some of those areas in that image were not quite black. They were kind of a light gray and uh, so anyway, hitting Control T, kind of moving this around so I can see it better. And then doing a little bit more, getting rid of that sharp edge. And also after hitting Control T, I'm gonna scale this up. Hit Control T again. I'm going to right click on it and select Warp. So I'm going to try to, that little top edge, try to adjust that angle a little bit. And I've hit Control T and I have rotated it. I'm going to put this over here maybe. Just trying to figure out where this makes sense in the composition to add these cobwebs. And you can always reduce the opacity of these webs and then increase the opacity to where it looks realistic. So I'm going to select the cobwebs and the levels that adjust them by holding shift and then control C, control V and now I've got another layer of that exact adjustment we just did. So I'm going to hit Control T on that, rotate it by hovering over one of those corners and just dragging this somewhere else. So I did the same thing, copy pasted. And I'm going to warp this one so that it looks flat 
on one of the edges. So hitting Control T on it, and then right clicking and selecting warp. And you can kind of push and pull it. And then hitting uh, Control T on it again, rotating this, bringing this up. So this is as if the spider has got webbing on the floor. It's not just in the corner, so he's got webbing everywhere. I did have one of these tarantulas uh, when I was 14. And uh, yeah, it's actually got like a six or seven inch leg span. And there was webbing all over, the, all over her cage. It was a female. I think you can tell this one's a female by the abdomen. But put a layer mask on that uh, flat webbing. Going to get rid of it on the lady. Of course, another way of doing this is just bringing the lady layer above everything. So you won't have to use a layer mask and erasing the webbing that's on her. Unless you do want webbing on her. So I'm going to select all of the layers that comprise all of those cobwebs. Going to hit Control G, Command G on Mac, and group those. Label them cobwebs. And you can also label the layer so you can find it easier. Labeling this yellow. So. Hit uh, Control C, Control V on yet another layer of cobwebs. So trying to figure out where to put another one of these little cobweb bunches. Maybe put it over here. So it's good to experiment like, what is this gonna look like? What if I put it over here? So I'm gonna rotate it and put it back to where it was. and then maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. Just try to make each one of these look a little bit different from each other so it doesn't look as if I've copy pasted. So I've got these little perspective lines and you can go by that obvious line towards the far left that we know there is a line there as far as perspective and then just kind of guess. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Leave me a comment as to uh, whether or not you know what is a better way of doing this. So I'm wanting these guides in here. We'll just delete that layer later to create a sunbeam. And so I've got a new layer labeled it sunbeam. I'm gonna select the polygonal lasso tool or, or, or is it polygonal? I don't know, leave me a comment. I'm gonna just draw out a shape of a sunbeam coming through that little window. And so I'm gonna use these guides to try to figure out what the shape on the floor would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the window to create this beam and then we'll put a sunbeam floor layer Go ahead and connect that, and uh, I'm gonna change this color of the foreground to sort of a, a sunny yellow orange. I'm gonna hit OK and then Shift Backspace and fill with foreground color. And you're done, that looks perfect. File export, there's nothing more to do or you could select that layer, go up to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Set it to something uh, around 24 or something like that. And of course, uh, reduce the opacity. And bring the opacity back up just a little bit. But trying to create it like a subtle sunbeam effect. I'm going to create another layer, create the sunbeam on the floor effect. And I'm going to draw out what this shape 
might look like. Again, using the perspective guides I've kind of drawn out. And I connect that and hit uh, shift backspace, fill with that same color. There's our sun hitting, so I'm gonna hit filter blur, Gaussian blur. And this would be a little bit sharper, so it wouldn't be 24. So I'm gonna reduce that, maybe 12-ish, 16 maybe. And then of course reduce that opacity. And then maybe selecting that layer, going to a different blend mode. So hitting or selecting overlay, and then turning up the opacity to 100%, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna create, got a mask on the sunbeam, so coming from the window. I'm gonna use the uh, gradient tool to sort of perfectly get rid of some of that sunbeam. It should start to dissipate towards where it's hitting the floor. So the gradient tool will basically do the exact same thing if you, using a mask, had a black and white brush. It's just doing it perfectly. Whereas you could really kind of mimic this with a super soft brush with a low opacity. But the gradient tool can kind of make your life easier in that regard. So here, got another layer mask on the sunbeam floor and I'm just going to try to correct that perspective a little bit. And I did wind up correcting um, the sunbeam a little bit with the layer mask. So I've got a new image, it's a whole bunch of stars and a heart. And I've got a levels adjustment layer over it. I'm going to clip it to only affect the stars layer by holding down Alt, selecting in between. And I'm gonna remove or increase the black point a little bit. So select that layer, switch it to, of course, screen. It'll get rid of all the dark areas. And we will hit Control T, kind of move this into position then with a layer mask, I'll get rid of that heart, obviously, and all of the other stars. And this will kind of be our dust coming in through that uh, sunbeam. Because it stands to reason there'd probably be a considerable amount of dust in this space. What with the clutter and the cobwebs and the giant spider, the space needs a little TLC. Uh, so yeah, there'd be a lot of dust. So creating that layer mask, going to increase my brush uh, with the right bracket tool and just get rid of all of this dust. You could have a little bit of dust outside of that sunbeam, but for the most part, we're just going to isolate it to the sunbeam. Of course, uh, reduce the opacity if you want. And I'm going to copy paste that dust and levels. Control C, Control V, Command C, Command V on Mac. And I've got another layer. Going to hit Control T to move this extra layer of dust to that lower portion of the sunbeam. So it might be a little bit more faint compared to the upper portion of the sunbeam. Going to control C, control V on the sunbeam floor and didn't think it was prominent enough. Need to make that look a little bit more bold. And of course I'm going to reduce the opacity on that because that's a little too bright. We've got two layers of the sunbeam floor, reducing the opacity of the second one. And there you have it, giant tarantula in a dingy, cluttery, creepy space.
with uh, her owner not knowing what to do because she might be moving soon. She's all like, what do I do with this giant spider? I don't know. So be sure and check out the other videos on the channel. And thanks for watching.